I've always been quite fond of Berkeley Systems After Dark screensavers. I mean, they were just screensavers, but they were charming and colorful and flying toasters and toast. But today, I want to talk about one of its spin-offs that I find quite fascinating, and that is After Dark Games, developed by Berkeley Systems and published by Sierra Online in 1998 for Windows and Macintosh computers. After Dark, it's not just a screensaver anymore. Now, truth be told, by 1998, After Dark had long since become more than just a screensaver, with a broad range of merchandise, apparel, books, and even a short-lived TV show. But sure, After Dark was indeed widely known for its initial existence as a premium screensaver package, including such classics as Flying Toasters, Bad Dog, Hula Twins, and Moen Man. Screen savers, they were big business, and Berkeley Systems was keen to cash in. And After Dark Games was the series' first foray into gaming, at least in a dedicated product. There were interactive portions packed into certain AD screensaver modules already, but this was the first time fans were able to take direct control of such characters as Hula Girl and the Flying Toasters themselves. And while the gatefold big box it came packaged inside is enjoyably glossy and colorful, the inside is far less appealing. With a basic cardboard box liner and the game CD-ROM nestled inside a jewel case. There is at least an instruction booklet in here too, touching on each of the 11 included minigames, alongside the expected installation and troubleshooting tips. Not needed, but always appreciated. Following in the footsteps of countless other desktop minigame compilations of the time, After Dark Games plays in a window and lets you fully explore its content of your own volition. Oh, and there's obnoxious music playing all the time, you gotta have that. Along the bottom of the window, you get a string of 11 games to choose from. We're gonna go from left to right here, since that's what I'm feeling at the moment, which means we begin with Hula Girl. This is a vertically scrolling platform survival game, quite similar to any number of free online games and mobile titles you may have seen over the years. But instead of jumping upward, as many others do, here you're dropping and floating around from platform to platform. You play one of the Hula Twins, and it's your goal to stay on the screen while you hula your life away. Head off any side of the screen and you lose a hoop. You also have that green yuckometer at the bottom left, which is affected by objects on each platform. So, yucky objects like frogs, spiders, broccoli, and your twin sister will eat away at the yuckometer, with you losing a hoop if it's depleted. And yummy stuff like cupcakes, bowls of ice cream, and sodas will increase it again. About the only other thing going on here are the various types of platforms with things that make you slip, slide, bounce, and drop on contact. And yeah, that's about it. Just try not to die and survive as long as you can. Next up is Fish Shtick. Probably one of the least engaging games on offer, in my opinion. It reminds me of one of those mini games cobbled together for a typing tutor program where you're presented with a timer counting down and a group of letters floating by, and you have to descramble and type in the word. Longer words get you more points, and yeah, that's it. The fact that the letters are slapped onto the sides of fish does little to increase its appeal. Roof Rats is far more enjoyable by comparison. This is a tile matching game where the goal is to match two or more rooms of the same color and help each character down from their respective rooftop. Apparently, these type of things are known as same games, and I've seen a crapload of these games included on everything from pocket PCs to Linux distributions to shareware compilation discs. The gimmick with Roof Rats are the, uh, guess the Roof Rats, or the characters you have to save, in addition to just clearing as many rooms as you can for a high score. Each character will jump off the roof at a different height, so there's a welcome bit of additional strategy involved. For instance, the bodybuilder dude will jump off at five stories, but the rat has to be down to one story to be saved. So yeah, it's simple, but addictive. Exactly the kind of thing you look for in a desktop game like this. Likewise with Solitaire, which... It's Solitaire, of the Klondike variety, so if you're a human being with access to a computer in the 21st century, then you already know what this is. It can be played in Vegas or standard styles. You can draw one or three cards at a time, and there are a variety of card aesthetics to choose from, all with After Dark themes, because of course. Yep. Solitaire. Mm-hmm. 
Next is Roger Dodger, a grid-based puzzle game where you play a pulsating orb thing that has to collect all the green things and avoid all the red things. Once you've collected everything, it's onto the gateway and the next level where difficulty inevitably increases and the speed at which you must avoid hazards rises alongside. Yeah, it's fine, I guess. It's not as complex as something like Chip's Challenge, since the levels are so small and there are relatively few objects to deal with. Personally, I find it positively hideous in terms of visuals, but you know, it's here. Golf clap for effort. Then there's Zapper. This is a straight up quiz game with a timer ticking down while you're presented with a barrage of yes or no questions to answer. Many of them take the form of common misconceptions and the fact that each of them are worded in such a way that they can only be answered as yes or no makes otherwise innocuous questions somewhat tricky. But yeah, it's just a game show kind of thing without much show or game really, rather forgettable. Then we have Moen Maniac, which is an absolute breath of fresh air compared to some of the other drab stuff on offer. It's more or less Pac-Man, but you play the mower from the Moen Man screensaver. And as I've talked about before on LGR, I have an odd fondness for games with lawn mowing, despite having less than an enthusiastic point of view when it comes to mowing actual lawns. There's something about the idea when it comes to mowing lawns in games that just amuses me and mowing maniac hits the spot. Especially since you can plow through just about everything. Fences, bushes, flowers, groundhogs, doesn't matter. And while you should still beware the angry enemies, they are not stole your fuel this time around. In fact, you're the one grabbing fuel here and every time you do, it's like a power pellet, letting you mow down the enemies in gratuitous fashion. Nice. Bad Dog 911 is the inevitable bad dog game, tying into the classic screensaver that was seen running on monitors in every dentist office and public library in the 90s. The game, though, yeah, it's pretty weak, I think. It's just another word descrambling type of game where a clock cleaner is being terrorized by the titular bad dog, and it's up to you to get the platform up to him by typing in words. That jumble of letters up at the top can be used to form anywhere from 10 to 20 words. Enter enough of them and the dude is saved for that level, and after that you can continue typing in more for a higher score. Eh, I always wanted to play the dog himself, like chasing down cars or tearing up computer desktops or whatever. Oh well. At least Toaster Run fulfills a similar fantasy, letting you take direct control of one of the famous flying toasters. This plays a bit like the Macintosh classic Glider, but instead of a paper airplane flying through a residential environment, you're a chrome toaster with wings. Screen by screen, you'll explore a house and surrounding areas with a variety of pickups, hazards, and obstacles in your path. You have three lives, and once those are up, that's it. Game over, Toast. But, ah, uh, as simple as this is, I can't help but enjoy. Airborne bread heating appliances are endlessly endearing, and being able to fly one back and forth through a suburban landscape is my kind of fun. Unfortunately, we've got to move on to foggy boxes, which is just the game dots. You know, the kind of thing you might have played on a scrap of paper at your grandparents' house back in the day, or in the back of a car on a long road trip after the batteries on your Tiger Electronic Baseball game ran out. The object is to draw lines between each dot, forming a grid along the way. If you happen to be the one to draw in a line that forms a square, you get to stick your mark inside it. And that's it. Whoever has the most of their mark by the end wins, and playing against the computer is cheap and not very fun because binary logic, it's kind of what computers do. Finally, we have Mushu, another game that can be described as moderately adequate. This is a classic game of Mahjong Solitaire, where you're given a pile of tiles that must be matched and removed one by one. You get some nice tile sets featuring both After Dark properties and traditional Mahjong tiles, and the music changes to fit each one. But I mean, again, there's a million other games that do this, free and paid, and just about every single one I'm experienced with does it better. Are you really gonna go out of your way to play this one? Probably not. And that's After Dark Games, a pile of particularly predictable yet pleasant programs. It is by no means a bona fide gaming classic, unless of course you remember it from childhood or have an unnatural fondness for Berkeley Software's screensavers. And while well, I fall into both camps, so I think it's great. <laughs> okay, maybe not like objectively great, but on a surface level of nostalgia-ridden silliness, After Dark Games offers up a good time, or good enough. And hey look, it even came with an After Dark Games screensaver to go along with it. Eh? Eh, yeah, whatever. I'm gonna go run over some groundhogs and fly toasters through a bathroom. Oh. 
And if you enjoyed this video on After Dark Games, perhaps you'd like to see my video on After Dark. Or, you know, check out any of my other stuff. There are new videos every week here on LGR. And as always, thank you very much for watching.